What's going on YouTube? 0088 here and I'm here to react to Death Battle. Ryu vs Jill. I don't react to all their death battles. The Windscrew Attack put two people that are my guys together, all my girls. And they just, you just got to see that shit. Especially when, I think this animation is 3D animation as well. So I've got to check this shit out. We've seen Ryu a few times. I remember, I think they did Ryu versus Scorpion before. Uh, they did Ryu versus someone else. I can't remember now. They've done Ryu, they've used Ryu a few times. Jin, I think they might have used once before. I'm not sure if they've ever made Ryu and Jin fight before. Maybe this is the second time. I don't think so. They've said two. Maybe a, I'm surprised. You've got the main guy from Tekken, the main guy from Street Fighter, and this is the first time they're face to face. Though Kazuya used to be the main guy from Street Fighter. Maybe Ryu fought Kazuya before. It's so strange how uh, Kazuya was the main guy at Tekken for like, I don't know, two years, and then Jin Kazama came in and took over that. I don't think anybody could ever take over, over Ryu as the main guy of Street Fighter. But anyway, let's watch Ikazo. I got my money on Ryu because Ryu's got fireballs, he's got Shoryuken, Jin is hard. He's got Devil, to be fair, Devil Jin. Everyone has different I don't know, actually. He's going to be hard. Arts. For personal honor, to improve health, and for kicking the crap out of the other people. Like with Ryu, the wandering world warrior of Street Fighter. And Jin out. Kazuma, the power-hungry martial arts master of Tekken. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and oh, skills. That movie, to find out man. who would win a death battle. Woo! This is some sick animation. I can't wait for it. I love when they go on hard on the He's the hero of the world Not just never knew. His name cool, means but... prosperous, plentiful, and film. abundant. He is the Wandering Warrior. He is Ryu. That's a pretty epic the introduction, bro. Orphaned at a young age, Ryu was adopted by the martial arts master, Goken. Under Goken's training and beside his fellow student Ken Masters, Ryu was trained in the art of Ansatsuke, aka the Assassination Fist. This ancient fighting style was specifically designed for come murder, out, man. which automatically makes it the best this martial art ever. Well, Goken actually taught Ryu a slightly altered variant of the Ansatsuke. Inspired by Karate, Kenpo, and Judo, Goken's version was a generally lethal one. Oh, lame. But the deadly side of the martial art lived on in Goken's brother, Akuma, who would ultimately prove to be Goken's downfall. One day, Ryu and Ken returned to their dojo to find their master dead. Yeah, kind of. He got better later. But Ryu didn't know that, so he swore to wander the earth perfecting his abilities until he could take down Akuma himself. With the Ansatsuken style, Ryu is a master at close quarter combat. With such techniques as the Shoryuken uppercut and the flying hurricane kick, he can take down most foes in mere seconds. He's like a living helicopter of pain! But he can also use his key as a weapon, firing a fireball of energy from his palms. Say it with me, Adoken! Goken's version of the Ansatsuken also taught Ryu several defensive techniques, including the skill to parry most other attacks with precise timing. And with all these awesome powers of whooping ass, Ryu eventually made his way to the World Warrior Tournament. With his skills, Ryu quickly reached the top of the competition. For the title of World Warrior, he faced his toughest opponent yet, Sagat, who ended up beating the shit out of him. But Sagat was surprisingly a pretty good sport, so when he thought the fight was over, he offered Ryu a hand up. And in that moment, something dark swelled from within Ryu's consciousness. A force so fierce and destructive, he couldn't contain it. And he lashed out. With an enraged shout and an explosion of blood, Ryu emerged as champion over Sagat's near-dead body. Ryu's dark side had been unleashed. This was the Satsui no Hata. A violent inner force so extreme, its name actually means surge of murderous intent. If I ever knowingly father a child, I know what I'm naming him. <laughs> Under the influence of the Satsui no Hado, Ryu falls into an uncontrollable rage known as Evil Ryu, where his physical and spiritual power skyrockets. He can even teleport and use Akuma's favorite technique, the Shun Goku Satsu, which literally translates to instant hell murder. Okay. <laughs> Shit, now I gotta have two kids that I care about. <laughs> the Shun Goku Satsu, or the Raging Demon, is a fatal move which attacks the very soul of its victims with the gravity of all their past sins. <laughs> to make them die 1,000 deaths! But while the Satsui no Hado is a manifestation of Ryu's dark side, he has achieved balance with the light. 
This is called Mu no Ken, or the power of nothingness. Power of nothingness. That doesn't make any sense. What's he gonna do with nothing? By focusing on mental and spiritual refinement and detachment, Ryu has achieved the ultimate state of being. This begets a power strong enough to match and even surpass the Satsui no Hara. Oh yeah, that's how Goken survived Akuma's hell murder attack. And now Ryu's got the same power. Look at him go. With all this power, Ryu's performed some incredible feats. Aside from winning the World Warrior Tournament, he's dodged bullets, destroyed skyscrapers, and survived Balrog's Gigaton blow. Yeah, remember him from that boxing match we did? He's strong enough to kill an elephant in one punch. Ryu is so tough that he survived getting impaled. And when he goes evil mode, he can just walk through gunfire. He's strong enough to lift this enormous boulder over his head. By estimating the boulder's volume compared to Ryu's height and assuming a sandstone composition, we can determine it must weigh at least 36 tons. Plus, there's a guy sitting on top of the boulder, and he's lifting his own boulder! Guy from, um, Man, Oro's cool. Oro, While yeah, Ryu's fighting record isn't track. perfect, his wins far outnumber his losses. He's defeated his friend Ken, the dictator M. Bison, and even a genetically engineered super warrior named Seth. But those were just pit stops compared to his frequent battles with Akuma. And if you don't know, Akuma shattered an island with a single punch, split air and rock in half in Australia, and jumped to the ocean surface from 4,000 feet below in three seconds while destroying a submarine. That's about 3,000 miles per hour, by the way. And I guess he just powered through the bends. Yeah, he's definitely final boss material. And so, years after Akuma's attack on his foster father, Ryu faced him for the final time. And with the power of Moon no Ken on his side, Ryu was victorious. All in a day's work for everyone's so favorite Street Fighter. You have the power to actually defeat that beast. Now show it to me. This power is not your defeat. So fat his fingers are. This is the power to push forward. <laughs> If you met Jin Kazuma when he was just a boy, you wouldn't figure he'd grow up to be one of the most dangerous men to ever live. Unless you already knew about his super deadly and super crazy family. Jin was raised by his single mother, who taught him the Kazuma family style martial arts after his father abandoned them. Ah, story of my life. <laughs> no, really, those training days with Mama Boomstick were some of the best times of my life. One day, Jin's mother sensed a great evil approaching. She told him that if anything were to happen to her, he should seek out his grandfather, Heihachi Michiru. Right on cue, a big-ass ogre showed up and attacked him. When Jin came to, his mom and Shrek were nowhere to be seen. Don't you hate it how moms are always right? Thankfully, it wasn't too difficult for Jin to find Heihachi. Yeah, he's super rich and has a really tall building. Kinda hard to miss. So rich, in fact, that Heihachi owned a multinational conglomerate empire with its own she banking, like weaponry, military forces, and, just for kicks, a martial arts tournament. Whoa! Why didn't Mom tell him about this? Time to collect on those missing Christmas presents, Granddad! Ah! Well, she also forgot to mention that Heihachi is a terrible father who's obsessed with throwing his own son off cliffs. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, I guess. Regardless, under Heihachi's guidance, Jin trained and perfected the Mishima Ryu fighting style. With two types of martial arts mastered, he's got all sorts of techniques that can pack a punch. Such as the flash punch combo and the electrically charged lightning screw uppercut. Or his famous 10 hit combo change. But he stops using once he gets Mishima's you stuck in his flurry of punches and kicks, you're he not going anywhere that. until he I'll finishes like you off, off with a classic dragon uppercut. With the talents and the thirst for revenge, Jin entered his well, grandfather's King of Iron Fist tournament. There he came face to face with the ogre once again. But instead of, you know, interrogating him to find out what happened to his mother, Jin just killed him. Nice job, stupid. There goes the only lead you had. Yeah, nothing tastes better than sweet, sweet revenge. Except for maybe mom's cooking. Well, unfortunately, it didn't last long, because he got shot up by his grandfather. Oh, that son of a bitch! Mama always said never trust a bullet man who tells his barber, give me the wolverine. But Jin had a little surprise for Heiachi, and for himself, actually. Thanks to his family line, he, he has inherited the dreaded and His moveset was sick when he had the machine moveset, Which turns set, him into yeah, a yeah, flying laser-shooting demon person! Now that's one genetic disorder you can sign me up for! Good news, then. I've been working on an artificial digestible version of the Devil G myself. Oh, yeah? 
that happened to be the chewy fruit candy in the blue bucket? What did you do? Well, my dog Jack Spaniels was wandering around scrounging for food as he does, and uh, yeah, I was wondering why he suddenly grew horns and wings. You have got to be shitting me. Anyway, compared to his base form, Devil Jin's strength, speed, and durability are better than ever. Devil Jin is strong stuff. enough to throw people better. dozens of feet and even Devil smash Jin. them through walls. For this instance in particular, he's pushing Ihachi through the limestone wall of an Aztec pyramid. To do this, Jin must have struck the wall with force equal to at least 10 tons per square inch. Hell, Jin is stronger than this guy called Raven, who can toss around this giant war robot named Nancy! When compared to real-life robots of similar size and accounting for additional weaponry and gear, this machine should weigh anywhere between 15 to 30 tons. Also, Jin is fast enough to dodge bullets and fly into orbit. And survive falling all the way back down! Which puts his maximum flight speed over escape velocity. That's more than 25,000 miles per hour. He can even punch so fast he causes shock waves. That's right, Jin throws punches faster than the speed of sound. Remind me never to give him a high five. Totally reasonable, considering his grandfather can catch bullets in his teeth from just 20 feet away. And surely Jin can do better than that. Heihachi doesn't even have the Devil Gene. That's right, the Devil Gene traces back not to Heihachi, but to Jin's grandmother. Who freaking rides tigers. As a result, Heihachi's son Kazuya inherited the Devil Gene and passed it on to Jin. Kazuya's powers are basically the same as Jin's, and he's shown just how far the devil form can go. He shot a blast powerful enough to erupt a volcano, and survived a satellite laser straight out of Independence Day. This is the same laser that once shot the robotic soldier Gunjack. By measuring the blast radius and resulting devastation, the laser's firepower appears to equal 3.7 megatons of TNT. Damn, you know the bomb that got dropped on Nagasaki <laughs> before the sequel? Yeah, this laser is like 176 of those hitting Jeez. all the- It's an enormous advantage against almost any foe. With it, he's won three of the four King of Iron Fist tournaments he's entered. He's defeated Heihachi, Kazuya, and even the supposed OG Devil Man himself, Azazel. Too bad he had to start World War the Second sequel just to find him. Kind of a dick move. Jin's certainly no angel, and hardly a hero. Still, when it comes down to it, he is the child of destiny, and not even the Devil's blood can seal his fate. Can you understand? All this fighting is pointless! It's never gonna end! It will end with this bloodline. And that is why I fight. I've never actually heard Jin speak in English before. Alright, the combatants are set. Like, Let's send this debate no, once and for all. So but first, <laughs> I've never heard him speak in English before. Of that was glass and eat some delicious blue apron. English was pretty cool. Non-GMO. Delicious shouting at your screen, where do I sign up? So check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash battle. That's blueapron.com slash battle to get your first three meals free. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Yeah. Jim Kazama, Ryu. I don't know Ryu's last name. Definitely not Hoshi, like the film said it was. <laughs> the shitty 90s movie. Why has he got eyeliner? <laughs> I love the models, I ain't complaining. I love it when, it's, when they do this, they go this far with There's them. There's no link. Talk is cheap. The answer lies in the heart of battle. I'm 
showcase the upper limits of their power. You. We know that in their base forms, both could lift around 30 tons and move at supersonic speeds. Also, we know Ryu could maintain a much better level of control and discipline in Muno Ken than Jin in Devil Form. Yeah, hardcore Tekken fans know he had pretty good control over it in that Blood Vengeance movie, but it's pretty inconsistent with game canon. Even Tekken's creator has said it's not canon. Also, Jin's fall from orbit feet was impressive, but it is hard to quantify due to his presentation. Even if we assume we are to take it literally, a man of Jin's size landing at terminal velocity would equal around 18 tons of force. But to find their limits, we had to scale them to comparable characters. Scaling Jin to his father Kazuya was logical. Kazuya survived that 3.7 megaton laser blast, and it's clear it was necessary for him to be in devil form to do so. Kazuya's own laser blast was strong enough to help kick off a volcano's eruption, right, okay. a feat which could require up to 100 megatons of TNT. But that's a very generous estimate, and its actual potency is likely much less. Since their power comes from the same place, and Jin's even defeated Kazuya before, it's safe to say Jin can do all this too. As for Ryu, we knew exactly who we had to scale him to. Let's talk about Akuma. First off, just to prove that Ryu and Akuma share <laughs> very similar abilities. Both were trained in the Atsutsuken fighting style, and both possessed Akuma's winning Sasuke that. no Hata. But then they he fought each other several times, this. and when the story was all said and done, Ryu emerged, ultimately victorious, based on his skill alone. Now that that's out of the way, let's watch Akuma punch an island to death! 
With a single strike, Akuma managed to break apart an entire island so thoroughly that Ryu, who was on the island, was That's left floating well, helplessly in game nearly game clear game water. Game well. Assuming the island is somewhat circular, we've estimated the volume and deduced that in order to fragment the island like this, Akuma's punch must have been over 400 megatons of TNT. And Tekken will actually exist in the same universe as Street Fighter now, the way the games are going. And Ryu takes blows from this guy all the time! Sure, oh, Ryu wasn't getting hit with 400 megatons every time Akuma landed a punch, but the most a Devil Gene Carrier has ever survived amounts to less than 1% in comparison. Even if Jin could survive a strike as strong as Kazuya's volcano feet, it still pales in comparison. The fact that Ryu survived being on the island as it was blown apart helps justify this scaling too. Well, Jin still takes the speed advantage with that flight into orbit, but it doesn't mean much when the difference of power and toughness is this massive. When it came down to it, Ryu's strength, durability, and control were just too far out of Jin's reach. Wait, Wiz, we forgot a feat. You remember that gun jack robot? A later model of Jack once destroyed a meteor. Couldn't we just scale Jin to that? Well, it's unsupported by canon material, but even if we did, guess who destroyed an even bigger meteor? Akuma? Akuma. Yeah. <laughs> well, gin up, everybody. Ryu's taking care of business. The winner Take is Ryu. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Awesome. If you guys want exclusive commentary on the episode, just click that little box right over there. And if you want the battle music from this episode, you can get it by clicking the link in the description. You know this by now. What's next time? Is that Samurai Jack? Afro Samurai, oh damn, I've got to watch that. I've got to watch that, Samurai Jack and Afro Samurai. I've got to watch that. I haven't actually watched the Afro Samurai um, anime properly before. I've watched like, a few episodes, I need to watch that, man. Maybe I should do a reaction to it. Let me know if I should do a reaction to Afro Samurai. Uh, Samurai Jack, my boy. You know what they could have done? They could have done Samurai Jack and... Uh, Mugen from uh, Samurai Shampoo, maybe he's not popular enough, I don't know. Or Jin from Samurai Shampoo, I don't know. Or, um, they could do Mitsurugi versus Mugen. That's funny because I created Mugen from Samurai Shampoo with Mitsurugi's uh, uh, fighting style on Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur 5, I think it was, where you can create your own characters. Create Mugen. Anyway, enough about Soul Calibur. This was awesome, well done, Screw Attack, Death Battle guys, I loved it, I enjoyed myself. But you know who you should do next? You know who should be next on Death Battle? And don't even try and tell me Ryu, 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 Ryu Azuki isn't popular enough or something, because I've seen them do more obscure characters in Death Battle. But I want to see Ryo Hazuki, right? Ryo, my boy Ryo Hazuki f fight someone on Death Battle, alright? I need to see that shit. I need to see this shit, my boy Ryo. It could be Akira, right it could, the guy from the Yakuza franchise, anybody like that, I don't know. But I need to see my boy Ryo fight someone in death battle. Now's the time to do it, Screw Attack. Shenmue 3 is coming out. Uh, Shenmue HD is coming out in a month's time. Like, just, just a little over a month, Shenmue HD. Shenmue 1 and 2 HD, re, a remaster, kind of remaster. So do it. Get Ryo Hazuki on death battle. I imagine you're going to do it around when Shenmue 3 comes out. I don't mind waiting that long. That'd probably be the best time to do it. Ryo Hazuki versus Akira, or Ryo Hazuki versus, um, I can't remember his name, the guy from Yakuza franchise. Or any other, any other franchise that matches Ryo, I don't know. But yeah, do it. Do it. Anyway, that's my reaction to Ryo versus Jin. Death Battle, if you liked it, give me a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for notifications, and I'll see you again.